sorry. Another amazing thing about God is that he's a total healer, right? So even though I may sound hoarse now, like four days ago, I was like way worse. You couldn't even understand what I was saying. I was basically whispering. And I was nervous because I was like, God, I got to preach on Sun on Wednesday. What am I supposed to do? And then that faith inside of me was just like, tell him to heal you. And I was like, all right, God, like, that's easy enough. I was like, okay, I'm healed. And I would wake up the next day even worse. And I'm just like, oh, okay, come on, like, where's my faith, right? And I'm thinking to myself, like, just tell yourself you're healed, you're healed, you're healed. And up till yesterday, I woke up. No, yes, the, last night I was coughing all night, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, my voice is going to be gone. I'm so nervous. And then I just felt it all come out, and I could speak. Like, you could hear my actual tone. Before, I was like, hello. Like, you could barely hear me. And I was just like, see, that's my God. Like, he healed me. Even though I may not be, like, my whole voice, you can hear me. That's all I really wanted. I was like, God, as long as I could sing and I could talk and I could preach, like, I'm good. Just fix it, please. Um, so that leads right into what I'm going to be talking about tonight. And the message of tonight's, the title of tonight's message is Prayer is Potent. And for those of you guys who don't know what potent, it means it just means like toxic, but in a good way. It means like it, it kind of like festers. It kind of, you know, think of if it's something like boiling over inside of you. If that can give you like a visual image of what I'm trying to get to. And we think that prayer has to be this, like, length thing. We think prayer has to be this, like, eloquent thing. It's not. You don't have to go to God and say, oh, my Lord, thou art the greatest God in the world. You know, like, I, maybe not this generation, but there has been generations that that was a thing. This generation, we just think we got to be like, um, hey, God, um, so I don't really know, but I don't have the right words to talk to you. I don't, I'm not sure how to go about this. That's cool. I mean, I think we all struggle in the beginning with how we're supposed to talk to God and, and what, what does that sound like? What does that look like? Do I go on my knees? Do I like do this kind of thing? Um, personally, I just lay in my bed and I have a conversation. Um, I tell the youth all the time how I'm in my car and I'll be like, heck, I'm chopping it up with God. I'm just driving, I'm laughing. And I don't think people look at me. I'm not that really kind of person that's like, oh my God, everybody's looking at me. Like, I really could care less. But I'm like having this ongoing conversation as if it, it's a person, because he is a person. But to other people, they don't understand that concept of like God's a personality. God is funny. God's totally funny. And he is loving and he is, he gets like angry. He even like, he's, he even um, has, he's like witty, you know, like he'll tell me something sometimes and I'm like, what the heck was that? Like, that's like funny, you know, like, but, but God is, I mean, we're in his image, you know, so we're not different than God aside from our minds. Our minds are nothing like God. So that should make you happy that you're serving someone who's like 50 times better than you are, right? But that's, that's the key point in praying to God is that understanding that he hears you and you're actually talking. You're talking to God and that he hears you. That is like the basis of your prayer. As long as you can understand in yourself and believe in yourself that I'm talking to God, that he hears me, then your prayers will be heard. If we can turn to Mark eleven twenty two. I bought a new Bible recently. And I bought it because it was like really cute and it had a really nice design on it. But I just couldn't bust it out and just preach with it because this is like my first Bible. This is the Bible that I like grew up in God with. And it has like all my notes and it's just bendable and flexible. I just couldn't bring up my little like nice one. I'm going to leave that at home. <laughs> okay, Mark 11:22. Okay, so it says, And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. I want you to specifically look at a couple things, actually. Firstly, that it says, does not doubt in his heart. How many times have we sent a prayer up and it was totally full of doubt? That we were just like, 
okay, God, I'm praying because either one, I feel like I have to pray or two, because it's like a routine kind of thing. Like I don't have to do it, but it says I should do it. Other people are doing it. So I'm going to pray this prayer because other people are praying this prayer. How many of you guys have like prayed a prayer just because somebody else has prayed it or because you've heard pastor pray about a certain thing? I'm pretty sure all of you guys, because I've done it myself. The main thing to take from this is that when you pray, you can't have any doubt in your heart, not even an ounce of doubt in your heart. And it says, truly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. So the reverse would be, God would be basically be telling us, if you have doubt, don't approach the mountain. That is what God is trying to tell us. If there's a mountain in front of you and you're like, I'm going to pray about this situation. I'm going to pray about this test. I'm going to pray about whatever you guys pray about. But really in your heart, you're not even sure if you have enough faith to pray about that to make sure that it's going to go through for you. Don't do it. Leave it alone. That's why God puts it into other people to pray for that specific thing. For you, he puts things in your heart that he wants you to specifically pray about. Um, when we have like failed faith, so for instance, when we do those prayers and we send up those prayers that are filled with doubt, it makes our faith shaky because we pray for this thing and we're like, a week later, we're like, Lord, I prayed for that specific thing and I don't see any results. I don't see anything happening. I don't see anything moving. What's going on? Like I'm praying and God's like, what do you mean you're praying? There's doubt in your heart. I, I don't hear that. You know, I, that's not faith-filled. That doesn't ring my ears. And what that does to you in your walk is it makes you feel like God isn't doing anything for you. When really it's just you not doing it for yourself. You have to be, be and stand in your faith when you're sending a prayer up to God. Because that's what he hears. He doesn't hear your shakiness. You know God. God is a very foundation kind of person, very you know, structured, organized kind of person. And if you're sending up something that's shaky, how is, he, how is he supposed to take that and run with it? You know, it's, it's not possible. So basically, don't, don't approach the mountain if you can't handle it. I want to read um, the continuing verse, um, Mark eleven twenty four. 2nd. So it says, therefore I tell you whatsoever or whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now there's so much power in that, but the only prerequisite for having the thing that you're praying for is to believe it. Like I was saying, if you don't believe it, leave it alone because it's not really meant to be yours. I'm a very firm believer in God giving me specific desires to pray about, specific things. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but specific things that he's given into my heart to pray about. And he's saying, therefore, I tell you, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Believe it and receive it. Like I was saying earlier, your, your words and the things that you carry with you and the things that you are strongly about, that's what makes things happen. It's not just thinking about it constantly. It's not just hoping that it's going to be something for you. Hope is a great thing. To have hope that you're going to get something is an awesome thing. But if you don't have any kind of belief behind it, any true belief behind it, how is it supposed to be yours if you don't even really deserve it? You know, and God is a rewarder. And if you have enough faith to actually go up to him and say, Lord, this is what I need, then he's going to give it to you. Amen. Faith is divine. God instills faith to believe for something. He puts the desire in us. If we can go to Psalms 37, 4. Now, a lot of people mistake this scripture. Not necessarily mistake, but they don't also see the hidden treasure inside of it. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the, the desires of your heart. Now, most of us are going to automatically think, oh, God's going to give me everything I ever think about, everything I ever want, anything that's ever been in my heart, I get. It's not necessarily how it works. What he's saying is that I will put the desire into you. 
I will give you a reason to pray. I will birth something inside of you and you will therefore have enough faith to pray about it and you will receive it. Why would God have you pray about something that he knows you're not ready to pray for? He wouldn't. Sometimes we think that we have to pray for a specific thing because pastor says it. Because a lot of times, like, pastors, pastor has um, said things that he's prayed about and it's came true for him. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to come true for you. That's his walk and his life and what God knows that he needs. For us, it's different things. And that's why we have to be very in tune with God and listen for his specific voice and be able to differentiate if it's the world's voice or if it's or if it's God's voice. Because then when we hear the world's voice and we pray about what the world wants us to pray about, we're not going to get it and we're going to lose faith in God. But really it wasn't even God's fault, you know. And that happens to most of us and that's what makes our faith shaky and our belief shaky. And we don't want that. And all God really wants you to do is just stay in your lane. Don't go into somebody else's lane. Don't dip your toes into somebody else's water. Stay in your own. If you really don't feel like you want to pray about something, don't pray about it. There's other people who will pray about it. And God gives us specific things to pray about. And he will gladly give it to you. So... Oh, one thing, I was, it was so awesome. I was like studying this, right? And God would just like poured into this, poured into my mind this thought. He was like, we have to be examples for them. We have to be examples for them because God instills desire, right? So if, he, if they see us as examples, he's going to give them the desire. And then when their faith is big enough, he's going to complete that whole circle. And he's going to make them what they see in us when their faith is ready. And I was like, Lord, that is so cool because I don't worry about them. I don't worry about them. And I believe that every single prayer that we say for them is true and it reigns true and it's going to come to pass. I have no doubt in that. But what, what I feel like God was telling me was just that when their faith is ready enough to receive him, he's just going to blast off. He's just going to take them and make them who they need to be at the appropriate time. You know, and that's what happened to me. My... I love coming up here because, one, I get to tell my testimony, and I love telling my testimony. I could tell it five million times and be excited every single time I tell it because I was a different person four years ago. I was a completely different being. I had a completely different mind. I had a completely different just outlook on life, and my heart was corrupt. And to know that somebody could love me enough to, like, make me completely new and wash me away and wash all the things that I did not like about myself and make me a person that could love themselves, let me tell you the story every single day, you know. But I, for those of you who've heard me speak before, it's like I give not only credit to God, but I give credit to my mom because my mom was a prayer warrior. She prayed. She didn't take, and here's the thing. When we take our children up to God, some of us and some of us may not, we take, up, we take them up to God like this. Lord, my child sucks. He is stubborn. He is rude. He is, I can't stand him. I just, give me a new one. I hate this, right? Where, on the flip side, my mom was like, Lord, my daughter is a leader. She is bold. She is da 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 whatever she said, right? So God was like, okay, I see that picture, and that's what I'm going to make her. Whereas for some of the rest of us, he's like, why are you sending me up the same person? What am I supposed to do with the same person, right? So you have to take what you want and show it to God. Say, God, this is what I want. I don't want to see the old person. I want the new person. And that's what my mom did for me. My, I thank her so much for standing in that gap for me because I was lost. And she helped me to be found again. Yes, God, but my mom was the one who was like, God, she is who you say she is, and she will be who you say she will be. And that goes for us too. Sometimes we tell God like, Lord, like I'm this and I'm that, and I can't be this and I can't be that. And God's like, what are you talking about? I see you as a completely different person, but you keep offering yourself up to me as this person that I do not know. What do you want me to do with that? And so we're, we're still stuck here like I'm still this person, God. Like I don't get it. I'm still the same exact person. I still have the same exact thoughts that I had five days ago, five months ago. What am, what am I supposed to do? And God's like, show me who you want to be. Who do you want to be? And if you want to be a leader, then call yourself a leader. If you want to be the smartest person in the room, call yourself the smartest person in the room. You know, 
this, I, I love prayer so much. I was talking to the youth um, a couple weeks ago about how I was struggling with my chemistry class um, last semester. And I dropped it because I was struggling so hard that I was like, I don't want to get an F. Like chemistry is one of the most important classes you have to take. And I was like, Lord, I, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do, but like I need like a jolt of excitement about school again. I need something to help me get through this class because I feel dumb, you know. I was like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It it's, it's, makes me want to cry, you know. I was telling this to God last semester, and I was like, I need your help. I was like, I want, and then pastor said, he said something, and I was just like, I claim that. And I, and I went to God, and I was like, you know what, God? No, like, I'm smart. I know I'm smart. My mom's told me I'm smart since I was young. My mom always told me I was smart, and I was like, okay, mom, whatever. Like, I don't get multiplication, but okay, I'm smart, you know. <laughs> and, and she would tell me things like, you're a leader, and I'm like, I don't get that okay, I'm a leader. And then my youth leaders would be like, you're a leader, kick her out because she's dragging all the kids with her. You know, like people, you gotta, you gotta listen to what people tell you you are because even though you don't see it, other people can see it and you claim what they say about you. Anything that's positive, anything that's positive, you claim that. So uh, before this recent semester started, I don't even know where it came from, but one day I just woke up and I was like, I this is my career. Like, this is my career. I can't just slack off. I can't just not put my entire effort into this. This is my career. This is what I'm going to make money off of. And I just got this, I don't even, I can't even explain it. Just like rejolt to like go to school and kill it. Just murder school, right? And this semester I'm in chemistry. One, I have an amazing teacher, even though he's super awkward. He, he's like the most awkwardest person I've ever seen teach. But he's really, really thorough. And he'll be like, so do you guys have any questions? And the class is dead silent. He's like, okay, well, these are some of the questions you guys might have. And then he like breaks it all down. And I'm like, yes, because I was a little scared to ask that, you know. But, I mean, I admit it sometimes, you know, it's a big room. Um, and so I just, I, I, what it does, and now I have like a B plus in that class. And I'm just super excited about, and then I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, whoa, like I get this. I totally get this. It's so cool because, you know, for a child, for a kid who's in college and high school, when they don't get something, it's like, ugh, it's just like a blanket just covers you and you're just like, this sucks. And you're just like sweating and you're just like, I'm stupid. Oh my God. You know, but when you get something, you're just like, I'm smart. I'm the, I'm the smartest person ever. You know, it just gives, it gives the person a confidence that, that they should, they, they deserve, you know, especially if they're putting forth what they need to put forth. That's the only time. That's really the only time you're going to ever feel like that is if you step forward. See, I told God, God, I need an escape. I needed some help. So he was just like, okay, what are you going to do about it? And I was like, I'm going to step on up and you're going to give me what I need. And I'm going to put what I need to do in order to get what I want. And we think that things are going to come e easy to us. We're, we think that, that that don't make sense to me. It's like people who are like consistently in this one kind of life, they're like, yeah, I'm going to be, uh, who, okay, this example, high school. They think that they're going to be um, like thugs the rest of their life. And then one day they're going to magically have a career and, you know, get all the money and the cars and the women right? But that's not how it works. If you're going to be a thug, you're going to be a thug because you're going to have a thug mind. And the thug mind doesn't want to get educated. You know what I'm saying? They want to do what they're going to do. That's not the good look. Because like I was saying, this epiphany, you can call it, when it came to me, it was literally like, this is my career, you guys. And me and Veronica were just like, oh my God, yes. Me and Veronica, we go through the same exact things. It's crazy. We'll be in the, I'll be like pouring my heart out to them, right? And I do this because I think it's very important that they realize that just because I'm up here does not mean that I'm perfect. So I want them to know that, look, I struggle too, you know, but here's my solution. Um, so we go through so many things and I'll be pouring my heart out. She'll just be over there nodding like, oh my God, me too. So that's reassuring for me because that means I'm not the only one going through the exact same thing. Like literally it's identical problems, but they're not even problems because then I tell them what, what I'm going through. And I'm like, you know what? Like I just pray to God. Like I just hand it over to God. And you know why it works for me? Because I have faith. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hand it over to God. And yeah, he's going to give me what I want. Like, what do you mean? What's there's another way, you know, for me, for someone to have a prayer and it not be answered is kind of weird to me, you know, because I'm so used to my prayers being answered. And it wasn't always like that. But the more that I've grown in my faith, 
I've noticed that, wow, God, like you really answer my prayers. I went off on a tangent, but that's okay. So let's go to Luke 17. It was Matthew, Mark, Luke, just so you guys know. That's how I learned it. <laughs> 17, 16. I always do that when pastors just like, oh, yeah, I turn to this. I'm like, okay. I just think about it in my head. But it, it like rings. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I don't know what's after that. <laughs> Not by memory, but I can flip to it. I'm distracting myself. Where am I going? 17, 6. Okay. It says, and the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be rooted up and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. What this is showing us is how mighty God is to answer the most minimal kind of faith. If you have even the smallest faith, don't think that I'm trying to tell you guys to have the biggest faith ever. He said, do you guys know how tiny a grain of mustard seed is? It's like if you take off one of your eyelashes and you ball it up, it's probably like that big. It's so small. And God's like, if you have that much, if you have that much faith, just like that much faith, you can tell something to like get up and move. That, that is so weird. It's so weird, but it's so reality that it's crazy. It boggles our minds. We're just like, what do you mean? How do I, okay, I, I, had, I have that. I have a mustard seed. What do I do with it? You put it into action. You plant it. Take, I, I would say, think about the one thing that you desire the most, whether it be for your child to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost or for your car payment to be, I don't know, to, to have some kind of like miraculous funds come in for your car payment. I don't know, I'm just pulling it out of hat right now. I would say whatever you feel like right now is your biggest struggle or is your, your most, um, the thing that runs through your mind the most, pray about that. Don't pray about anything else aside from yourself and that. Because you just having that desire means that you have faith enough to be able to be like, God, this is the biggest issue in my life. And if you can solve this issue, if you can find this way, then I will serve you even more. Because that's all that this does. That's all that prayers does. It just solidifies God that much more. It just makes you say, oh, dang, that's God. So I'm going to keep going. If you can do this, then you can do even bigger than this. And all you need is a grain of mustard, is a faith, the grain of a mustard seed. It proves God's greatness, right? We're always wondering, where's God? We, we're so, we're generation, or I, would, I wouldn't even say generation. We're like a world of like, I need to see stuff. I need to see it. I need to see it. Oh, and I ran, I ran across this um, scripture one time. It's in Revelations, I believe. And it said something along the lines of, um, can't, uh, nobody can ever say that God's evidence wasn't on the planet. I'm really paraphrasing right now. God, nobody can say that God's evidence wasn't on the planet because God's evidence can be seen. And I was just like, oh, that's so deep. I'm, a deep. I'm not a deep person, but I'm a deep person. Like if you start talking about God with me, I will just, mm, just go, you know, just swim in it, just be about it. That, that's how I feel like somebody's walk should be is just like always about it all the time, all the time. Just like you expect someone in the world to be real, I expect someone in the Christian faith to be real. If you're not about it, then just go away. I don't understand why you're here. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, I'm just saying. Honest truth. Um, where was I going with this? What was I saying? <laughs> um, so the grain of a mustard seed, I don't know. I totally lost my train of thought. But... Um, Okay, so God reacts to genuine faith. So when you have genuine faith, I kind of already said that. When you, already ha- when you have genuine faith, no matter the size, then God's going to react to it. And that's that. That's all you really need to know. Um, now, my favorite part of this sermon is vagueness. When you send up a prayer to God, like I was saying earlier, are you saying like, oh, God, um, I just want to serve you. I just really want to serve you, God. That's, that's all I want to do. He's like, okay, you're serving me now. So now you're just serving him for like two months. You're just serving him. Whatever that means to you, everybody feels like they're serving him in a specific way. Everybody's different. What if you said, God, I want to be on fire for you. 
God, I just want to burn. I want to ooze. I want to overwhelm people with how much I love you. What if you said that? And what if you truly meant it? Don't you think he would answer you? Don't you think he would take you serious? It's not a instantaneous thing. It's a, God, I want to serve you. I want to burn for you. God, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise my hands just a little more during service. But God, I want to serve you. I want to burn for you. These are the things that I would say. I would say these things. I would go to prayer and just sit there and be like, wow. Because <laughs> people are praying in tongues. They're talking about, you know, you, you kind of get lost in everybody's prayers. And you're just like, is that how I have to pray? Because that's, I can't. Like, that's crazy. I love just sitting there and listening to people's prayers. But when you're able to pray on your own and you're able to really get that kind of, like, prayer that everybody else has, you're just like, oh, I'm doing this. This is real, you know. And... That's, oh, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> um, vagueness, right? So when you're going to God, you don't say anything, don't be vague. Uh, you guys remember when Pastor was talking about the guy who was impregnated with the bicycle? Who he was talking about how, like, he spoke in Korea, there was no way to say, like, I'm believing for God for something. So he was just like, guys, like, I'm impregnated with the bicycle. So it wasn't, I read the book, or some of the book, and it wasn't just a bicycle, it was actually a bicycle, um, a desk and a chair. And he was like, God, I want a bicycle, a desk and a chair. And he wasn't getting it. And he was like, God, I want a bike, a desk and a chair. And then the Holy Spirit was just like, do you know how many bikes and desks and chairs there are in the world? And he was just like, so, okay. And he was just like, be clear cut. Tell me how you want it. And the, and the guy was just like, okay, I want a U.S. made bicycle with gears. I don't want a mahogany desk and I want a chair with rollers. And so he would tell people like, yeah, I already got my stuff. It's already here. And guess what he got? A U.S. bike with gears, a mahogany desk, and a chair with rollers. God is in the business of giving you exactly what you want. So if you want something and you're really serving him and have the faith to believe in it, don't be like, God, I want a... Corolla, I want a Cadillac, and you ain't got the faith to actually believe to receive it, don't say it. Wait till you do, or I don't know, get a job. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's serious stuff, okay? But I had one of the same exact situations happen to me. I had a job. I worked at a coffee shop, still work at a coffee shop, and I didn't have a car. Luckily, thankfully, I literally live like down the block from my job. So I would just walk to work, no biggie. But sometimes it's raining and it's cold and I'm just complaining like, I hate this. I don't want to walk anymore. Like, God, I need a car. And um, God made a way. The first way he made a way was through Brother James. Brother James let me use his car. But in order to be able to use his car, I had to pick up his kids. Now, I love Brother James and I love his kids, but sometimes I'm like, I just want to go home and sleep. I don't want to go pick up these kids, but I'm just going to do it because I got to, you know, and that's just being honest. But, okay, but I would do it and I would be there and I would pick up his kids and all that stuff, right? And it was cool because he'd be like, if you need to use the car, just use it whenever you need it. Just let me know ahead of time, da 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 put gas in it. I'm like, cool. So I would use his car. And then, um, then I was just like, Lord, like, I like his car, but I have to use a pillow because he's very big, okay? And there's like a dent in the seat. And I'd be like sinking into it. <laughs> and I'd like <laughs> sink into it. And I'm like, I can't. I'm like, Lord, I, I want a car, but this can't be the one. I'm like, this can't be the car, right? <laughs> Not be the car. <laughs> and so I, was, I would like drive around and be like, God, I'm like, I don't want a two-door car because... If I'm, I, I'm like, I really want to give rides to people because I always wanted rides. I'd be walking home from high school and I'd say like, I just seen a heck of people I knew and none of them stopped to give me a ride. That's jacked up. So whenever I like, I don't really see them, but sometimes I see my sister and Rachel walking. I'll like give them a ride or my sister will call me, hey, can you give me a ride? Yeah. Um, or take them different or whoever, right? Because I feel like I would have wanted that. So I'd be like, so if I had a two-door car, like, that would be annoying. I don't want to have to bend over for them to get in, all that stuff, right? So I'm like, hey, God, two-door car is out. And I'd be like, Lord, I don't, I'm like, I really want a black car. Like, I just, a black car, right? So that's one part of the prayer or part of the whole super cool thing. 
Second part is I told, um, I would tell everybody, like, not everybody, but my closest people, like, I'm praying for a car, like, I'm believing I'm going to get a car, to the point where my sister and my mom were both believing with me for my car. Like, we would say, like, oh, yeah, your car's, my sister would be like, your car's coming. I'm like, I know, it's coming. And so what I did was, like, I told my coworker, I'm like, guess what? He's like, well, I'm like, I'm about to get a car. He's like, how? I'm like, someone's just going to hand me keys to a car. And he was just like, what? That doesn't happen. And I'm like, well, for me it does. I'm like, watch. I'm like, I don't know when. I don't know if in a year, two years, I don't know what. But I'm going to get a car and someone's just going to hand me keys to the car. Okay, so like a year and a half later, still believing 100%. A year and a half later, still believing with the same faith that I started out with. I was like, okay, Lord, get it down to the nitty gritty. Like I really need this car, right? So one, either, I think it was a Wednesday night, someone came up to me and was just like, I know you have a need, and I want to give you keys to, um, I want to give you my car. Like, I want to give you a car. And I just started bawling because, not because I didn't believe, but I was just because, like, oh, my God, like, it happened. <laughs> not that I didn't think it was going to happen, but I was like, oh, my God, it happened. Like, that's so tight. And the first thing I wanted to do, do, to do was go tell my um, coworker, right? So I'm just, like, super elated and just super pumped about now I have my car, right? And in exact the way, and guess what kind of car it was? A four-door black car. Exactly how I said it. So um, I went and I told my coworker, I'm like, hey, um, guess what? I got a car. And I was like, and you know how I got it? I'm like, somebody just handed keys to me. And he was like, what? Like, swear. And I was like, yeah. And he was just like, what are you going to pray for next? A plane? <laughs> and I was like, hey, maybe. <laughs> but the key to all this is just that one half faith, even if it's as small as a mustard seed, to leave things that you really don't have faith for behind. Don't even worry about those things. God, if you feel like somebody, like you see somebody who has a need, but you're really not like spiritually built up enough to pray and believe the whole way through, somebody else does. So somebody else will step in for you. Even though you have that desire, sometimes we're just not spiritually mature for it yet. And three, be as direct and clear cut as possible because God is a very sign still delivered. It's yours kind of God. And if you could believe that, then he will definitely allow you to receive it. Amen.